Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, what are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at Wally Wood's Heroes, Inc. from 1969, self-published. Kind of a bridge between underground comics and the superhero uh, New York comics. And uh, Wally Wood betting on himself, maybe at the height of his artistic powers. Let's see if he won or lost. Cartoonist Kayfabe is partially brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. We have three different levels, and at the King Kayfaber level, you will get all of our videos first because you are sitting in on the recording session. This will give you a leg up on what is called the Kayfabe effect. As Cartoonist Kayfabe gets more popular, everybody wants some of these books that we are showing off. You'll be the first one buying those before they disappear or go up in price. We are also a daily YouTube channel, which means we have covered about 1,500 comics and creators. If you go to the Cartoonist Kayfabe homepage on YouTube, you can search for your favorite cartoonist or comic book. So today we are looking at Heroes, Inc., number one by Wally Wood and a, a couple of his collaborative partners. Uh, Self-published by Wally Wood in 1969, you notice the first thing on this cover? No comics code. Right. This was aimed at adults, or at least maybe a slightly older audience than the typical uh, 1969 superhero comic. It has a lot in common with those visually. You can kind of see from the cover, it's that bright, saturated, four-color. Looks like a regular comic book, but a little bit more R-rated in nature. Probably not even. Probably PG-rated. Right. You just see that cleavage, and, and that, that probably gets dicey. But there was a chilling effect with that with that comics code uh, that, that got enforced you know, in the, in the middle middle 50s uh there was a magazine size heroes inc number two issue two issue two is the okay okay so i didn't know if like this was also a magazine yeah size we're or... gonna speculate a little bit about this because one of the things that comes up as we're uh, looking into this book is heritage auction sold 70,000 of these as a lot right uh, a couple of years ago and what that means is that's 70,000 undistributed copies. Yeah, for decades sitting in, who, Miss Tatiana Woods' uh, garage or something? I can't imagine. My guess is, because there's no, no comics code, is that some of these went to Army bases as planned. I think that was the, uh, the big business model. Comics were very popular on military bases as well as in military publications. And Wally Wood was publishing there. You know, Sally Forth was a series that Wood was doing that was in military papers. So, you know, he had some connection to that that audience already, thought he would self-publish this as a way to maybe get outside of the uh, Marvel DC system that he had worked in. Wasn't very happy with that situation. So what do you do? Do it yourself. Make a change. But I think when it came time for, like, some of these are on Army bases, some of them need to go to the newsstands, for one reason or another, I don't think they made it to the newsstands. It is the rare bird uh, in comics, who has administrative back end chops as well as very, very strong artistic credentials. Uh, almost nobody comes to mind. Uh, Will Eisner comes to mind. Todd McFarlane comes to mind. There's, there's less than 10, tw 20 guys, maybe. And Wallywood gave it a go, but uh, if you look at any of his correspondence and even some stuff in this particular magazine, he, he is an emotional guy. Uh, you know, was, uh, Jeet here sent his, his uh, shit list yes. of, uh, with names on it yes. of people that, uh, you know, Wally Wood hated. Uh, just an artist, a part of an artist's job is to, is to be emotional, I feel like. Uh, and that is not the person that you want spearheading a, a business. So I always remember um, we had Jim Stranko in the car at one of these shows <laughs> driving to a restaurant and talking to him a little bit about self-publishing. And Well, you, you know, I talked to like specifically Wally Wood, yes. like I mentioned to him, I, I, I was like, Jim, you know, you had super graphics, you had media scene, comic scene, uh, when, when there was no direct market. And, uh, you know, Wally Wood had Wit's End, he had Heroes Incorporated, Gil Kane tried his hand with Sta Savage and Blackmark. Like, like what, what did you get right that they, that they got wrong? And he, you know, looked way up at me <laughs> and he put his finger in my face and he was like, I'm tougher than those guys. And I'm fucking smarter than them, he said. I took away from that distribution problems. 
<laughs> and, and I think this is probably uh, part of the origin of issue two is, is my roundabout way to get back to that because it's not published by Wally Wood, right. the second issue. And it's like six or seven years after this issue. So almost, almost a separate, like, yeah. se- separate entity almost. But nevertheless, this is a fascinating artifact to me. Um, Wit's End, I think, had started at this point. Did, so yeah. Wood is trying to figure out that that kind of distribution and self-publishing. And uh, 1969, I mean, this is kind of like underground comics are also happening mostly on the West Coast as opposed to Wood being a, an East Coaster, I think, at that time. But it's still, I think there are lessons there in terms of like, this is a gap book. You know, this is sort of between the Marvel DC style and the underground comics. You have a few of these things that come through comics history, and this is one of those. You know what this is, man? When you put it in that context with with like these like cutting edge underground comics coming out, is uh, it's this th- because this reads like uh, you know this is post Silver Age Marvel, which has like a young vibe and like like a cool factor. Uh, this reads like. Uh, the comic version of you know those old pugs that give it one more go to to try to win a championship and it's frankly sad. Uh, that's that's this comic. Uh, it, it's it's Wally Wood completely hedging. There's no direction, so he has three different stories. And at the end, he's going to literally solicit yes. the audience. Like guys, I I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. What what, what do you want to see? You want funny? I can do more funny. You want action? I can do more action. It's 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 uh it's anemic it's it's uh bloodless and it, it's it's pre- it's pretty freaking sad and and the gestalt down to the point where like they're selling like a desert in mesa arizona or something uh to to uh help fund this comic you know what i was very curious about this because mesa hills is a thing and i wonder like was any of this real estate good or was this like you know the side of a cliff right and, and things of that nature all of the ads in here we'll see a few of them they're all aimed at military men right but the funny thing about uh, all the jewelry ones which are all the other ads is they all go to the heroes incorporated wally wood uh p.o box we're gonna we're gonna see in, in this one doesn't this is an armed forces diamond sale. Okay. This is selling to enlisted men who want to put that ring on their girlfriend's finger before they get shipped overseas. Right. Yeah. Before they get their dear John letters. Um, Canon. Interesting note. So you hear, you see art by Ditko and Wood. This is Ditko doing pencils and Wood doing finishes. Maybe some overlap there. I'm not sure if it's a clear breakdown between those two, but Steve Ditko nonetheless here working. Uh, maybe a little bit of a relationship from doing Wits End and publishing some Ditko in there. Um, like these guys together, they also do a piece at DC Comics, a sword and sorcery comic, whose name is now... Stalker. Stalker. There you go. Thank you. Um, they look great together. You know, Wood was such a good finisher. And I've read that whenever he was doing commercial work, like advertising work, it was him doing the finishing was like the key to that stuff and to keeping the uh, companies that were hiring him happy. It was him doing that that final polish, that top layer that seemed to be uh, the way that would work out of the wood studio. So Cannon, um, this is the first appearance of Cannon who would go on to become a character that would find a home in publication and military publications. It's a very fun character. It reminds me of like Executioner, you know, Mac Bolin, that kind of thing. Like it's a men's adventure thing. This is the standout strip to me in this, in this book. It's um, only when they had legs afterward. It is, although the origin is fantastic. Like, if you take this, these five panels for his origin, he becomes a prisoner of war, I think, in Korea. And the Reds, the Reds, try to uh, brainwash him, right? So whenever he gets recovered by the American forces, they do everything they can to undo the brainwashing. And whenever they're not able to do that, they have to completely wipe him. So he has no human emotions. And that's what you're seeing in these five pages. That's a great, great origin for, like, that cold-blooded assassin badass i mean it's i feel like it's what the u.s military would prefer (laughs) that's probably very true i wondered whenever uh i knew that there were distribution problems i was thinking like the army had objected at some point and didn't distribute it because i thought that's where this was aimed primarily and i don't know that that's true you know i think it may have had some limited distribution there but I, i there's a couple of uses of nuclear weapons in this issue and stuff so yeah, it, it's 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 interesting. It's a different era too, you know. You figure this is Vietnam in 1969, yeah. but like this is feels much more Korea, maybe. Yeah, it, it, I mean, this is Eisenhower comics, and and we have we have you know Dennis Kitchen making comics. You know what I'm saying? So so I mean, this is just such a throwback, 
and uh, it 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 feels like you know like what what was the goal? You're going to become the next the next big publisher because like if this kind of comic was created in a situation now, like it would be an idea to create something kind of sexy for the pursuit of like mergers and accus- acquisitions, like, you know, get Ted Adams from uh, IDW to, to buy your company or, or, you know, one of these Oni press, you know, bl- uh, lion, black lion comic things where you, you create a little imprint and you, you, you sell it off. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very cutting edge for the fact that it exists, but it feels very aimless. I assume it comes out of the Sally Forth and he must have seen circulation numbers and been like, there's 10 million of these things being published. Yeah. If we can tap into that market, yeah, very, we can do it. It's exactly, yeah, it's Ralph Cramden. This video is brought to you by the books that we make. Coming out in November, I have Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadly Scroll Alive, also available from Image Comics. I've also been self-publishing. True Crime Funnies you can buy on my website, jimrug.com. You can also get these from patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can find 1986 AMBW zines. As Hulk Grand Design is my contribution to the Grand Design series from Marvel Comics. These are going out of print, so pick this up if your comic shop still has one and you haven't added it to your shelf yet. Ed's latest, Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. 500 plus pages of all the Hip Hop Family Tree comics, plus 140 bonus pages. X-Men Grand Design collects Ed's three X-Men Grand Design volumes in one easy to find trade paperback because several of those original volumes are out of print and red room anti-social network and trigger warnings both available now with a third volume crypto killers coming in january and now back to our video um the story of this first canon is that a uh, a, a woman gets kidnapped by the reds who knows about some missile system <laughs> and uh, if they get that out of her it's going to change the whole balance of power on earth so Cannon sent in to basically execute her. Yeah, like, like I mean, the story content and stuff matters less than just, like, seeing Wally Wood over top of Steve Ditko. So you have your classic Ditko kind of compositions, and you could imagine Ditko's finish on something like this in the Spider-Man. You can see the little glimmers of Ditko in there. Yeah, the hand, th- this figure to me is very Ditko-esque. Yeah, and the way the things play out and stuff. But uh, you got you get Wally Wood's kind of command of drapery and adding more blacks like if you look if you look at a, a ditko piece that's made for color there, there's way less blacks on the page it reminds me of um mars patrol like an old military comic that or mil- an old army style story that uh, wood has hands in you know lots of explosions lots of action this was a genre of comics you know that that has kind of phased out the whole army combat type stories and a huge contrast to something like when we look at Kurtzman's war comics, you know, like this is the opposite side of that spectrum in every way. Right. I love this. Like whenever they go into like the limited color palettes, you know, the night vision, pretty fun effect to throw in there. Absolutely. And then very, very clear, uh, Wally Wood sound effects. The sound effects are, are spot on. The tanks are such a different era, you know, like you think of now where we would be doing references and trying to make our tanks very accurate. These are, almost like kids toys totally and and the thing is we know what wood is capable of and this has persisted with guys who operate in the mainstream almost forever where when they are betting on themselves i think about like the 90s era of image comics whenever you know big creators would come over they never put in their full effort it was always kind of like they're they're so used to the money and it's like i have this this rate at dc and i get this and and if I don't get that, then then obviously it's not, you know, I'm not getting what I'm worth, whatever. And then they have the opportunity to do their own thing. And th- you look at the pages and they look way more uninspired than the stuff where they got paid a lot. And and I, I get that. I understand that, that mentality. But you have to push through that to be, you know, at that next level. Like the creators who achieve that next level do that because they... They don't give the, the 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 Marvel DC. They don't give them their best, you know. Like they do the job, but you got to do the, your best for yourself. The person who did do their best, I think, is the colorist. There's a lot of these kind of beautiful, like blended colors, multiple colors. For, might for, might uh, be Tatiana. Yeah, it makes me wonder because I it's not credited, so I don't know. But it does make me think that because I you know I've heard people sing her praises and She's it's great. pretty nice coloring on here. Um, he he does find the the woman who had this information. 
gives her the escape rocket <laughs> to get out of there. And now he's fighting this military base because they did get all of her secrets. And so the idea here is a, a nuclear strike has been ordered on this base. The cannon's still there. And the way to keep those secrets from falling into the wrong hands, just got to kill everybody that was on that base. <laughs> kind of the perfect formula. I could see this being redone as a graphic novel because that's it's an action movie plot. This is Commando or something. You know, one guy versus this whole military unit gets one of their uh, their cutting edge jets, so that's going to unleash their bombs on themselves and you see your nuclear cloud going up. Yeah. And whenever he gets back, everybody's astonished at how incredible Cannon is. You know, one man invasion, a human task force, and our girl who he rescued would like to get some time with Cannon, and he's like, can't, gotta, gotta take care of business first. See, I'm much more interested in these, like, predatory things, where, yeah, I think maybe even that Mesa, Arizona ad thing, uh, it's all this, like, send us your info, your credit is good with us, send no money, so it's like, they're gonna be able to fuck up your credit or something, you know, like, they're, they're signing you up for some shit that you're eventually gonna have to pay for, and it's not cheap. Yeah, it's really unclear, too, because they're like $16 monthly, $10 monthly, and I think they have an interest rate somewhere in here. It's 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 pretty wild stuff. Yeah. And it, there was something we looked at. It might be in... It might be in this. Oh, no, here it is. No age limit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no age limit, dude. So, like, you know, laws were passed in our lifetime to prevent certain things, though they still skirted it, because, like, during those 900 numbers, that, that era... Uh, when you could call Freddy Krueger, they played some of the, you could find YouTubes and he's like, you hang up this phone. I'm going to see you in your dreams. And like, he's like, <laughs> it's, he wants little kids to call and stay on that fucking phone. That's hilarious. Look, they're asking for uh, the info that they want from you. It's your name, rank, serial number, and discharge date. Yeah. They want, they, they, want they really are starting a file on you. Yeah. And that, that one's going to Oakland. There'll be maybe a, two ads that are definitely going directly to Wallywood, and I'm curious about that stuff. See, this feels like some weird placeholder. Yeah, very generic. Strange. Strange ads. Strange all, all around. Is that Kissinger? I don't know. Uh, this is Wallywood with Ralph Reese. And I think Reese is doing the inking here, and Wood might be doing penciling and some inking on this one. Uh, the Misfits. Reminds me of Humanoids. Some yeah. of the visuals of this. Yeah, totally. But boy, look at the lunar landscape and stuff very nice art yeah yeah ralph reese is dope because he he unlike ditko like really did kind of adopt that wallywood aesthetic and and ralph reese is one of those guys that that uh that bridges that that gap he was doing underground comics like we did that video on bijou 8 uh he did the back cover uh of, of bijou 8 so you could see exactly what his chops look like all by himself he showed up in Eclipse comics later on. but Yeah, I was going to bring one of those Reese's pieces, like the one-man anthologies that collects some of his work. Yeah, good artist, and, and you can find some of his work out there like Reese's pieces at an affordable rate. Um, I don't know what to make of this comic. Wait, because I mean, you have an keep... alien invasion going on here, but then you have like these two psychics. One is some kind of creature. The other is sort of like a mutant. And then a third character that is like an android that's been modified for something. I, I mean, There's a lot going on th here. This the story content is, is nonsense. But Good coloring once again, though. But uh, fl flip the page real quick. Uh, you know what? Go go back to because like uh, what I was going to say was there were some good examples of um, like Wallywood's twenty two panels like throughout this thing that are kind of cool. You know, like through the window shots, two shots, close ups. Like like that's the interesting stuff. Like like the content is whatever. But it's like the gestalt is the thing when it comes it to this like comic. Ditko could have drawn this panel. The uh, half close up eyeball. Right. In the foreground. Although that is like a 22 panel, it always works panel. The coloring's really like going for it though. Like you have so many of these colors and gradations and stuff whenever they're cut by hand. Yeah. It's surprising. I, you know, it makes me wonder. I don't know what the years of their marriage was, <laughs> Tatiana and, right. and, and Wally, but I wonder like, is this the honeymoon stage? Is she really like going for it, helping him out? It's, it, there's a precedent for this, man. Whenever there is color, that is um, not Marvel DC when, when it's when it's the people who are putting up the dough or who care about the, their their own artwork because their name is on the credit. They cut those separations much more elegantly 
than you know the Connecticut ladies who at, at Chemical Color Corporation. You know what? It could be something like that too, where like they're cutting them themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like definitely. They're, they're not outsourcing this. You, you you're, think you're double lighting your wood double lighting? There's no way that that those Connecticut ladies are going to put something like this o o over top of uh, you know a DC work that's super regular. It's funny because this story I think is is really kind of eh. But the art's really nice in it. Yeah, no, Ralph Reese is dope. So, uh, you look, your credit is good when you shop military. Now, this this one is the uh, this is the Wally Wood PO box. That one, because we'll see it when he's soliciting letters for. So, like, what is that? He's just got boxes of these shits sitting next to his pee bucket. Nah, it's got to get forwarded. I mean, look at he, this shit. He's, he's not answering. You, you, you cut this. You cut this out. Yeah, he just cashes the check. You cut this out and then you wrap it around your finger so that you can know what your uh, ring size is. Like sweetheart or wife's name, her address. S sweetheart, that that's probably uh, controversial. <laughs> Got to make an honest lady of her. But you see, it's the same PO box right here. When he's just like, this is this is very sad to me. This is a very sad thing. See, this is the part that I th I thought that maybe they had published this because it says Armed Forces Dis. Jimmy, our P.O. box says cartoonist kayfabe. Like, you can have your P.O. box called whatever you want it to be called. I don't know if you can have it called Armed Forces something if you're working with the Armed Forces. I feel like they're going to be like, nah, we're not going to go for that. Like, they have to sign off on using that kind of a name. And clearly that ad's not going to Wood. <laughs> right. You know, he's not getting down payments on rings. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he was a, a California guy. But, I mean, it's, it's whatever this That's is. That's why it makes me wonder, like, they must have footed the bill for this. Yeah, because you'd be you'd be ruined if you had seventy thousand undistributed copies of a color book that you made. Well, the guy became a drunk and, sh and shot his brains out. So, like, that's how can you get more ruined? Yeah, I guess that is hard, <laughs> hard to argue with the ruined part. <laughs> uh, the last piece in here, Dragonella. This feels like a bad Mad Magazine. Yeah, thing, you know, like it's it's yeah, real he, throwaway humor that's not very funny. Right. He did the Prince Valiant, so like that's kind of the Prince Valiant. What's interesting is this is definitely a different letterer than the other stories. It's more italicized, so I was kind of paying attention to that. This era of Woods art, you know, that's like the uh, the sort of odd bodkins and like the Wizard King kind of stuff. I see it in there, but uh, it's just it's uh it's really throwing the spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks. Nothing stuck. Wonder who his assistants were too. Like if somebody's like writing some of this stuff because it's pretty corny humor, right? But wonder, you know, wonder who's in the studio at the time. Those era of Mads kind of, kind of are too. His art's fantastic. That ability to go into like the, um, I don't know, the cartoony style. Yeah. But also be able to do. With this whole issue, like it, there's a portfolio piece. I feel like it's great art. Right. This is a famous uh, image to me because. There was a Overstreet guide that's like an encyclopedia, a bibliography of all the cartoon, like a hundred cartoonists, and on the Wally Wood section they use this image right there. That's shocking. Right. Yeah, not not the one I would pick. I don't think if I were trying to explain Wally Wood to somebody. And then like our last piece, salute to a Medal of Honor winner. Um, once again, it feels like I, I wonder if the information I read about Wood publishing this is wrong, and he just packaged it. Mm. It just doesn't. Right. I, I don't know. It's an expensive book to make. It, it seems like this is a military publication or, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You know, even if it weren't a military publication, you could almost imagine, like, the, the people that are selling the rings, it would be, like, one of their publications. Because it would be similar if you were doing a catalog or something, you know, yeah. in terms of, like, putting out money to print this. Why not print this, get it on army bases, and then just, you know, you're just don't have to buy your own ads then or something. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's just, it's it's... It's so funny because there's nothing about the subject matter that suggests any kind of, like, adult. Like, maybe that's the closest you get, you know, a little shirt with some cleavage. But it's all just reads like little kid comics, you know? Like, this is a Saturday morning cartoon it's right totally, here. Totally Saturday morning cartoon. Dragonella feels like maybe it's some weird cross between comedy and Sally Forth. Right. You know, if you know Sally Forth's a hit. You want to show your uh, your buxom ladies on there. Repeat that if possible. I like Canon. We've uh, we've looked at Canon before. I don't know if that's a live video yet, but um, that that's a comic I I enjoy as like those men's paperbacks of, of that era. Yeah, totally. And and uh, you know, I think we give it a quick glance on the video that we have. But but uh, 
I mean, it's worth going going through a, a, maybe a little deeper. I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe a, a single issue or something like that because those books are big and sort of weird to yeah. I have, I have yeah, I have the Fantagraphics uh, reprints. It's been published in a few different formats too. If people don't know Canon, it's something you can track down at a I think at a reasonable price unless it's out of print again because that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, but. good to go. I am. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are uh, available. Uh, the vids are brought to you by the books that we make. And uh, before you is a very robust section of uh, the books that we have available uh, to begin. There's the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, uh, collecting all of my Hip Hop Family Tree works. It's the 10 year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of hip hop as a culture. Uh, the books are going quick. The books are going fast, and uh, they're flying off the store shelves, so get it quickly uh, if you want it uh, in any sort of timely fashion. Not the only holiday effort. We've got the trade paperback for the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy from Marvel Comics is going to be available in stores on November 14th. Got the comp copies of that. Uh, right now, two trade paperbacks of Red Room are out there, Anti-Social Network, and Trigger Warnings, with a third coming to you called Crypto Killers in 20. 24 uh, January. Jimmy, what do you have? Street Angel, Princess of Poverty is my next release. It'll be out at the end of November from Image Comics. You should be able to get that wherever books are bought and sold. It is a companion piece to Street Angel, Deadly Girl Alive, also from Image Comics. These two books, besides looking good on your shelf like a set next to each other, collect all of the Street Angel comics that I have made so far. So pick up both of those if you haven't already. I have been self-publishing True Crime Funnies, it's a collection of nonfiction stories, the 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history, and the BW zine celebrating the black and white explosion and self-publishing boom of the 80s and early 90s. These are all available on patreon.com slash jimrug if you want to read them now. Otherwise, uh, follow me and I'll let you know whenever they're available to buy from my website, jimrug.com. And Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design series. Um, I believe these are out of print, so pick it up if you haven't already whenever you see it in a comic shop. Um, these are disappearing fast and hard to tell when they'll be back. The books are the most important part of keeping that Cartoonist Kayfabe channel going. Uh, we are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos uh, available to you right now. Give the channel a search. Uh, go on the front page. Hit the magnifying glass. Search for your favorite comics. Check out those episodes. If we did not talk about your favorite uh, comics, let us know what they are in the comments, and we will uh, push those comics a little bit higher on our uh, to-read piles. Uh, the Patreon helps subsidize the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Uh, three different levels of participation there, but the King Kayfabers, the, you know, the top dogs, they get all the videos that we shoot before anybody else gets to see them. They're hanging out with us in the live stream uh, chat room right now as we are recording and we always shoot a couple extra videos at least one extra video so uh, there's a big queue of videos that develop that only the kings ha have access to before we release those you know later on down the line when jimmy and i have to take a break or something like this uh once again the books are the most important part but there are a few other ways to support the channel jimmy let the people know you can subscribe to the cartoonist kfab newsletter at the links below this video to keep up on what we have coming out and when you can also pick up cartoonist kfab t-shirts merchandise Hats, cups, mugs, stickers, and lots more of the Cartoonist Kayfabe Enterprise <laughs> at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. So uh, there it is. We laid it out. You have uh, num num numerous ways that you can uh, support the channel and keep these videos coming to you on a regular basis. Jimmy, without further ado, uh, let's get out of here. But first, please give everybody their marching orders. Read more comics.